好，呃，大家好，那欢迎来到呃这一场议程。对，那这场议程，呃，我们要特别宣传一下，这算是我们呃的 DevCon 邀请过来的特别议程。对，那这场议程讲者是呃 m o i c h e k 也对，他发音有点难念。对他刚刚跟我跟我讨论说，哎，除波兰人以外都不会念，呃 m o i c h e k 那呃，他现在是呃 s e c u r i n g 的的呃 Principal Security Specialist。对，那他在呃这个 Mac 的安全研究上面有非常专精的呃深入的研究，那也在 Apple、Facebook 以及许多的 Bug Bounty 上有有找到一些漏洞。对，那当然他是顶尖研究员，也在各个不同的呃 Conference， 包含 n o r c o n 呃 b l a y h e a d 以及 Mac OS 的一些 Secure Conference、Objective by the Sea 都有一些演呃都有一些他的演讲。那今天要分跟我们分享的题目是 Electronic Mac OS Privacy， 那这算是两个不同领域的结合。其实在 Mac OS 上做 rating， 可能大家就不是很熟悉了。那这一次他在引入了另外一个 Electron 的一个呃比较新的呃桌面软体开发的一一个系统。对，那大家看到，例如说 Slack， 有很多的系统是用这个 Electron 开发的。那呃，蒋主任为我们带来说，怎么样用 Electron 的一些特性，然后来绕过 Mac OS 上面 Privacy 的一些限制，然后来达到呃一些比较额外的攻击手法。好，那现在就让我们来欢迎我们的，掌声欢迎我们的讲者 a n v o y c h e k Yeah, hello, h i t c o m First of all, thank you for having me at、uh, this such a cool conference. Uh, and my today's talk is "Electronizing Macos Privacy: A New Weapon in Your Red Teaming Armory." So, as I was introduced, I have、uh, not really English-friendly name Vojtech Regua here.、Uh, I'm a head of mobile security at Securing,、uh, where I'm mostly focused on iOS and macOS application security.、Uh, in my free time, I run a blog,、uh, Vojtech Regua dot blog, where I, of course, document my Um, Apple security vulnerabilities I, I identified, and somebody of you may also know me from iOS Security Suite that I'm creator of. It's a free open source、uh, Swift library that helps developers、uh, making sure that their applications are run on secure iPhones. And recently, and that's a really new thing, I released a pre-order for my.、Uh, The biggest educational project yet, called、um, iOS Application Security Engineer, which I will tell you about at the very end of this talk. So, first of all, because that's a macOS specific、uh, presentation, may I ask you a question? Who of you uses Apple products like Macs or iPhones? Raise your hands, please. You should ask who don't use. <laughs> who don't use? Okay. <laughs> That's great.、Uh, yeah, I see. I, I, I see. I can see that most of you use you use Mac, so that should be fine, and you should be familiar with the mechanism I will be talking about.、Uh, so yeah,、uh, for those who、uh, don't use Apple products,、uh, the first point in the agenda is privacy fundamentals on macOS. So I will give you a quick introduction to to the basic mechanisms, and then、uh, we'll start talking about problems. And the first problems,、uh, the first problem we we're gonna touch is the problem with Electron applications, and the second problem is the problem with TCC permissions inheritance, and then we'll、uh, put together those two problems, and as a result of putting this this these two problems together, I will be releasing you a new tool, Electronizer, that is of course、um, free and open source, as all my tools um um um. Yeah, coding and releasing. As this is a kind of red teaming talk, and we are about to release a new tool,、um, we have to talk also about the detections because, like attackers, and in, in reality, may may use that tool to attack your machine. So I will talk also about about detections and how to prevent Electronizer from do, doing its work. And at the end, of course, the conclusion. Uh, so this presentation、um, is a kind of research continuation. I, I for the last four years, I think I was、um, involved into uh, researching uh, privacy mechanisms on macOS、uh, TCC specifically,、mm, and I, both with my friends, we released like 40. 
uh, 40 vulnerabilities in, in TCC, uh, which resulted in uh, two black hat talks, one on the what in the US version and one in the Europe version. Uh, but this presentation is not about releasing vulnerabilities in the operating system. Now uh, we'll, uh, in, in this talk, we're, we're going to attack already installed Electron applications to get the uh, privacy sensitive data uh, to which the Electron applications had access to uh, when you installed them. So let's start from the uh, TCC and privacy fundamentals on, on Mac OS. So if you have a Mac and the, the Mac has a default configuration, um, there is something called System Integrity Protection or SIP. And uh, on Mac OS, you are not a god if you have root. You cannot do anything you want with your operating system because of the because of the system integrity protection. It's also known as rootless because it will, yeah. Well, even if you are root, you are effectively not root. You you cannot do anything you want, and effectively uh, the the system integrity system integrity protection will uh, restrict access to many directories. Uh, many files. Um, it will, for example, prevent you from debugging Apple signed processes and prevent you from doing everything that could uh, impact on the on, on the crucial parts of the operating system. When system integrity protection is turned on, and this is the default configuration, uh, another mechanism comes into play uh, called TCC, uh, Transparency Consonant Control. And if you use Macs or iPhones, uh, when you install a new application uh, for the first time, let's say it is Microsoft Teams, for example, it will require you giving it access to the camera. And you will see a prompt, like here on the slide, for example. And this prompt uh, is the TCC prompt. Uh, and Apple wanted to make sure that uh, there is a physical user that clicks on the OK button. So even if you, for example, you are root, and you want to skip this button and, for example, as you can see on this slide, get access to address book, it should not be possible. And it is always considered as a vulnerability. So if you are, if you are somehow able to, for example, get access to address book without raising that prompt, this is, this is, this is something that should not be uh, happening. Mm, even if you uh, have control over synthetic clicks, so you programmatically um, s set the position of OK button and click like programmatically, it should not work. Apple wanted to make sure that only physical user may click on this button to protect your privacy. And what are the privacy sensitive resources according to Apple? Uh, Some time ago, on the Apple Security Bounty Program webpage, mm, you could read that sensitive data includes contents of contacts, uh, mail, messages, notes, photos, or real-time or historical precise location data. Uh, now, this um, uh, this information uh, has been taken off from 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 the website, so it's not longer available. But the TCC, it's TCC itself has new uh, restrictions, and Apple, every major macOS version, uh, keeps adding new TCC protections. So as you may see now, uh, there's Game Center, FaceTime, um, I'm sorry, camera, uh, Bluetooth, automation, desktop downloads, uh, network volumes, pen drives. There are a lot of things that are now considered as privacy sensitive. And to all those resources, you would need to press the uh, OK on, on the prompt or have a vulnerability, of course, to get it without the, uh, the prompt. And the, the TCC configuration uh, could be seen if you go to uh, settings and privacy and security. Mm, so as you can see, uh, there are uh, the, 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 those permissions are really granular. And you can see like lunch services, contacts, calendars, etc. And they can even be more granular because if you go to automation, you will see that there is there are there are also kind of kinds of permissions that you allow one specific application to control another specific application. So yeah, TCC is now really really huge mechanism. And the uh, the TCC uh, can be also based on private entitlements because, like from from Apple's perspective, uh, from the system processes perspective, 
it would break some macOS functionality if user uh, would click deny on, on some system components and you, your system could not get access to your, some of your resources. So Apple had to um, introduce some private entitlements uh, for, for their processes to get access to this privacy sensitive um, data without raising uh, prompts for you. So this is a quick introduction just for you to understand how entitlement system work. So if you uh, use code sign minus D minus minus entitlements um, command on any application, you will see uh, their entitlements. Um, technically, there are XML um, bundled to the applications. They are all validated by MFI. MFI is um, Apple Mobile File Integrity. Mm, it is a kernel extension that implements a, a mandatory access control framework policy. Maybe you know it from BSD. Do you, do you, do you know what, ma ma what MACF is from, from BSD system? Oh, somebody of you uh, says yes, that I'm, I'm happy with it. And the, the MFI itself has also a user space daemon. So wh wh what will happen if you try to uh, assign a private entitlement to any of your executables? So uh, we have a simple Hello World application. Uh, we have a simple XML file with TCC manager entitlement. That's the ultimate uh, private entitlement that wi wi with that an application can read and write to TCC database and can effectively, effectively control the, the TCC. Uh, as you can see, uh, we pro we are proving that Hello World has no um, has no code objects. Uh, it's it's not signed at all. And if you sign the the Hello World application with the private entitlement, and you will try to run it, it will be instantly killed by the operating system. And if you go to logs to the console, you will see that restricted entitlements are not validated, bailing out, which means that operating system would kill that application. So you effectively cannot assign your applications uh, private Apple, Apple's entitlements. Okay, but how that TCC itself is, uh, is built uh, from our hacker's perspective? Uh, so it's a SQL3 database, mm, and actually there are at least two databases. There is one global da database in library application support called Apple TCC, and this is for um, this is for um, uh, the permissions like full disk access. So every user on the operating system has the same database, and per each created user, there will there, there will be a separate uh, database in, in home direct, starting from home directory, as you can see. Because, for example, you may have two users on one Mac, and one wants your Google Chrome to have access to your location, and the second user may not. So that's why those the, the per user databases are separated. And as it is a SQL3 database, we can investigate it and, and see uh, and see its contents. So there will be uh, uh, four columns that are um, imported from from this doc perspective. So in the first first column, you have the um, the, the the TCC permission. Uh, in the second one, you have client, which is a bundle identifier of the application that has already granted access or denied access. It may be also a path, but usually it's, it's bundle ID. Our value, of course, stands for if user accepted, the, the on the click OK on the prompt or, or denied. Mm, and the last one is code signing requirement, the CSREC. And you may see the question marks because uh, code signing requirements are in binary form. So um, they, they cannot be uh, uh, read here as, as ASCII characters. All right, so I think you have uh, mm, at least small understanding how TCC works, how it is based, and what it is used for. So now let's talk about the first problem, uh, the problem with, uh, with electron applications. And yeah, raise your hand if you use any electron application on your Mac. Yeah. Because because they are everywhere, as you can see, like Slack is uh, is Electron based, uh, Visual Studio Code, Notion, Microsoft Teams, GitHub, WordPress, uh, Twitch, Discord, and many many more. Like now, like probably a half of my uh, of, of third party applications that I have installed on my Mac are Electron based. So yeah, that's that that's that's a pretty common thing. 
and like from general point of view, uh, what are electron applications? Uh, simplifying, they are embedded browsers with embedded uh, websites, right? And as any other website, there will be HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files. And the problem is that the JavaScript files have bridged to your native OS API because the, the, those are na the, those are native applications, right? So if those are applications, they may need to move a file or create a file or open a socket or you know do any kind of you know interaction with your, your 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 operating system. So there must be a bridge between JavaScript and your your OS um, API. And in the past, and as it is a hacking conference, you probably uh, read a lot of write-ups regarding Electron XSS vulnerability leading to remote code execution. That was pretty common, and it's still uh, and it's still doable. As probably after me, there is a talk about such such a case, so it's it's still it's still a popular thing. But this talk is not about web security, so we're not going to talk about cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. On this talk, we're going to focus on the TCC and how the election apps can uh, be abused to, um, to get access to privacy-sensitive data. So yeah, on macOS, popular election applications will require you granting them TCC permissions. Because for example, install Microsoft Teams, so you have to grant them access for camera, uh, for, for microphone, for uh, uh, s screen recording, or you install Visual Studio Code, so you would be probably interested in opening files on desktop or in download, so you will get you will give the Visual Studio Code access to desktop or, or documents, etc., etc., etc. And uh, the problem um, I'm gonna talk about was documented by me back in 2019, and in 2019 mm, I prepared a simple vulnerable electron application uh, which you could see uh, had access to my camera and and uh, had some entries in in keychain uh, in macOS system keychain so yeah it's like a standard electron application with those two capabilities and as you remember as i introduced you to electron electron are like a website so they have html css javascript files so the code injection in electron applications was like possible by, by, by definition, right? You could just echo to one of the HTML files or one of the J JavaScript files. It would, of course, break the signature of the whole application because you modify one of the files, right, that are in the directory of the application. So the signature of the whole directory would be, uh, would, would not match the original signature. So. Is it any problem to macOS? If you open the application, you can see my arm. So uh, it still had access to the camera. There is also a part from uh, here in saying that the application had access to the keychain, but the signature was broken. Yes, it was broken and it was still possible because macOS verifies only the signature of the main executable and as we modified one of its HTML files. It's not a part of the main executable, right? Because those are text files, not executables. Yeah, so uh, back in 2019, I published also free tricks uh, that, can be, uh, that can be used to abuse the Electron applications. The, the first one was executing JavaScript code within the, uh, the main process context uh, or loading your dynamic library uh, to the Electron applications. Really, really useful for, for red teaming and DLL side loading known from Windows and or spawning any applications you want. In this case, of course, I use calculator to, to provide you a proof of concept. But uh, new macOS, macOS Ventura, has fixed that technically, t t t this technique finally. Uh, so now when you go to, for example, applications, and you verify that, for example, GitHub Desktop has been installed with your user's permissions, and when you try to echo one or like to, 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 uh, to GitHub Desktop or any other applications directory, uh, this operation would not be permitted. And there will be a prompt that terminal now was prevented from modifying apps on your, on your Mac. And this is because uh, Apple introduced a new protection called um, 
app protection. Uh, and this is uh, when application is, is launched for the first time, mm, that di its directory uh, will be locked. And the only, uh, the only process that can uh, modify the contents of this directory is a process that has been signed with the same team identifier. So it, it was done as that because of the updaters, for example. An application must have uh, functionality to update itself, right? So, and the updater is usually, uh, usually signed with the same certificate, so the application could still update itself. But your application, your, ma your malicious application with different signature, with different uh, developer ID certificate should not be able to modify um, installed application, which is good. So now let's talk about the TCC permissions inheritance. When we know that we cannot, u u we cannot easily modify the contents of the election application, so we need to find a walk, a walk around for that. So TCC inheritance system is really, really complicated and caused many vulnerabilities in the past. I personally found like maybe four or five uh, vulnerabilities in TCC that abuse the fact of the permissions inheritance. And the, the information I uh, put on the slide may not be always true. And please keep in mind that, that Apple constantly changes the implementation of the TCC. So this may change. Don't, don't stick it to it. The general idea uh, that Apple has, and it may not be always true. Like I don't know what Apple will do in, in two years with that. Uh, when, when an application has private TCC entitlements, so now we are talking about the system process as usual, as I can show you, showed you before that you cannot uh, sign application with custom entitlements with your developer ID. It's all, it, can be, it can be only done by Apple. So then the permissions are not inherited. So if Apple signs something, with private TCC entitlement, and that application spawns another application, the TCC permissions are not inherited. But when an application has TCC permissions granted by user, I mean by you, uh, so you click the OK when Teams, for example, ask you for camera access, those TCC permissions will be inherited by all the children spawned by the main executable, by the main application that had the initially the TCC permission. So the TCC permissions are, here, are inherited. Of course, uh, all Electron applications you have installed on your machines are the second case because you downloaded from the internet and you granted them the TCC permissions. So all the processes that, that will be spawned by those applications will also have the TCC permissions granted to the main apl applications. So yeah, if only there was a code injection technique that doesn't break the Mac OS Ventura app protection mechanism. And of course, as you may guess, uh, this talk is about uh, such, a, such, such a technique. So let me introduce you to the new tool, Electronizer. So as we, as we talk about it, Electron apps are like websites uh, with embedded web browsers. So you can open DevTools and execute JavaScript within their context, right? Like usually if you open Google Chrome, you can right click, click inspect and you can execute JavaScript within the context of the web page, right? That's, that's pretty simple. So by default, Electron applications allow users to spawn them with Web Inspector API uh, turned on using the uh, dash dash inspect flag. So and this is what the Electronizer will do. It will spawn Electron applications with the inspect flag and using the Web Inspector API it will under the hood connect to the WebSocket and execute our JavaScript code within the Electron Apps context. And the Electronizer was made in Swift. It's now on my GitHub. I will uh, show you the, 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 the link in a, in a few slides. But generally, you have three commands, uh, list apps, inject, and verify. Pretty simple. So if you list applications, you will see all the Electron applications you have installed on your machine. Pretty simple. And if you use the verify, uh, ver verify switch, for example, on GitHub Desktop, it will under the hood spawn GitHub Desktop <laughs> with the inspect, inspect flag, and it will see if, the, if a WebSocket uh, has been opened on a specified port that, that Electronizer wanted it to, uh, to spawn with. And as, for example, GitHub Desktop spawned with the, uh, spawned with the WebSocket server, uh, 
the electronizer was able to determine that is vulnerable, and you can after after that you can of course kill the elect kill the electron app you 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 verified. But the but the last option, the inject, uh, the, the 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 most uh, the most interesting one of course, is the mm, I is the switch that actually allows you to uh, inject a custom JavaScript you want. So you can use the path.js and uh, and execute the, your, your specified JavaScript code. But I also prepared some predefined scripts that will open calculator, do a screenshot, steal address book, bind uh, a shell, or take a selfie. So let me show you uh, the first demo uh, in, in Visual Studio Code. We will get unauthorized access to desktop that is usually uh, always protected by the TCC, right? Because it's a privacy sensitive resource from <coughs> Apple's perspective. So you you open Electronizer with inject switch. We specify Visual Studio Code. Predefined script would be bind shell. So uh, Visual Studio Code has just started uh, just a shell for us, and uh, we now let's try if uh, let's see if we have access to desktop files. As you can see, the operation has not been permitted. So now, using a, it's not even a reverse shell; it's a shell spawned by the by the Visual Studio Code. I connect to it uh, via netcat, and I'm now I will be using a wonderful tool made by Cedric Owens that will check uh, all the TCC protected uh, the, the, the directories, actually the, the, those three directories: desktop documents and downloads. If we have already access to. And as you can see, Visual Studio Code has access to desktop documents and downloads. So now if we use cat on, on the secret TXT on desktop, that its content should be shown. And as you can see, it was shown, which means that we abused Visual Studio Code permissions uh, to get access to files on desktop. So that effectively bypassed the idea of TCC. All right, let's do a similar thing, but now with Microsoft Teams. Uh, so we now used a predefined script, take selfie. And if you check your temporary directory and selfie.jpg, you will see me, which means that Microsoft Teams under the hood was spawned. It spawned another process that inherited the TCC permissions, and the, that, that process take the self. Simple. Uh, but you may um, see some applications that will have the inspect flag disabled because there are some uh, companies that actually care about your um, uh, sec security for if you have code execution on, on the machine. Uh, it's not really common, but there are, su are uh, such companies. So yeah, let's talk about uh, such a scenario. Uh, so if you go to Electron Docs, and do the electron fuses, you will see that there is actually a flag. It's not very. It's not a very new feature. It has like maybe one or two years. But for the time be times before, you developers could not do anything with with the inspect flag. But now it is possible. You can restrict uh, the no CLI inspect um, thing to you know make your make your electron application more secure. Uh, and actually, for example, Slack developers did it. Slack developers used that, that electron fuse to disable the inspect flag. You can confirm it with, with such a command. Uh, npx electron fuses read, you provide the application, and you can see that enable node CLI inspect argument are disabled in terms of Slack, so which means that we cannot use electronizer versus the newest Slack version. But if you read the documentation uh, even more carefully, you will see that there is something called Sentinel bytes, um, and it's always uh, an exact string. So let's search for the string. Where is the where is the configuration when Electron App knows that then then the CLI node node CLI inspect flag is actually disabled? So I uh, changed the directory to Slack. And I made a simple grep, 
uh, and I search for, for that sentinel bytes, and it turns out that uh, the electron framework matches. So as you can see, it's in contents, frameworks, electron framework, et cetera, uh, so, so on and so on. So it's not in the main executable. So if the main executable uh, was, um, for example, signed with uh, disable library validation flag, which is really common, you could just modify one of its framework and everything will be fine. But, you know, it's, it's modifying the application. If you have an ADR, you know, the, the blue team guys may, uh, may detect that. So do you remember the SQLite free database of TCC I showed you before? There were the question marks, right? Let's decode the question marks. Let's see how macOS actually knows if the application that has granted TCC permission is actually that application. So if you base 64 encode those binary blob and use the following code I prepared, uh, it will print you a human readable version of the code signing requirement. And this is a question to you, what's wrong with this code signing requirement? Let me read it with you then. Unsure Apple generic stands for the certificate must be issued by Apple. So you cannot like create a certificate with open SSL for your own. It must be your paid certificate from, from Apple developer side, right? And certificate leave, something, something, and Unsure Apple generic and certificate, blah, 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 some, 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 uh, uh, some things in certificate and certificate leave, blah, 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 blah exists and certificate leave subject organization unit equal to uh, the developer ID thing. So it will verify only if the, 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 the process with the specified bundle ID was signed with the developer, developer certificate, right? There is no information about the version of the application. No such information, just, just information about bundle identifier and the, and the team ID used to uh, sign, the, sign the application. So we can do a like simple we, we can do a simple downgrade attack just by injecting to an older Slack version. Because from macOS perspective, if you sideload anywhere on the operating system a, an older version of Slack, the operating system will not even notice that from the TCC perspective, because TCC will verify, okay, this is Slack. And yes, this Slack was signed with the developer ID, then the main executable before asked for the TCC permission, right? So let's see a demo. So let's try Electronizer inject to volume slack. It's in volumes because I mounted a DMG file, so it's in, in volumes. And you are injecting to an older slack version without the inspect flag disabled. And we ask the, the, the slack to, uh, to the screenshot for us. And as you can see, in temporary directory, you have a screenshot created. And if we, if we open it, we have a screenshot. So we abused an older version of Slack to get the TCC permissions of the newest version of Slack installed on your machine. And do you think it's a zero day? Uh, no, it's not. I documented it one year ago and nobody cares about it. It's still, it's still an issue. We, it's, it still works on, on the newest Macs, and yeah, it's, it doesn't look like Apple wants to fix that. So th as I told you at the beginning, this talk is not about, about releasing zero days. It's about putting together two, maybe not widely known, but two, two known problems. And if you are interested in downloading Electronizer, here I have the link to my GitHub and the QR code if, you, if you'd like to. I will give you like 20 seconds if, you'd like, if somebody of you wants to take a picture. Okay. So now let's talk about the detections. The detections are really simple in this case, right? Because as we have an endpoint security framework on macOS, uh, which generates events about the process that are spawned. Uh, in our EDRs, uh, we can filter for 
ES event type notify exec, and in the context um, parameter, you will see all the arguments passed to the applications. And in this case, we need to spawn those election applications with inspect argument, so we can just uh, look for inspect argument if, if any of those election applications are open with this argument, and if somebody uh, opens uh, an election application with such an argument, we can suspect that something bad is right now happening on our machines. So yeah, that's, that's the probably the most convenient detection uh, you can do uh, to protect your, your environment uh, against this attack. So yeah, to, to summarize everything. Um, at the beginning, I introduced you a bit to uh, basic uh, the privacy fundamentals on macOS, how this is all built. Like you cannot, with, with even with root, uh, bypass those privacy uh, mechanisms. Uh, I showed you that there is a problem with election applications. Still, uh, they, they they can be opened with the inspect plug, and there is a second problem with the TCC that the permissions are inherited, and the TCC doesn't care about the versions of the applications. So, yeah, even if you have uh, and if you even if you have an electron application or you are developing electron application and you uh, even if you disable the inspect flag still unfortunately macOS will allow to s to m will allow to sideload an older version of of the electron application and still get access to its resources so that's it from the uh, technical part of this of this presentation and as i sh as i told you at the beginning i wanted also to uh, to show you a new course that I'm creator of. It's iOS Application Security Engineer uh, course. Uh, it's probably the first uh, such a certification on the market, uh, made especially for um, iOS developers and iOS pen testers that want to verify security of their application or want to uh, learn how to code their uh, iOS applications securely. It's now in the pre-order phase, so it's now discounted, of course. But it will it will change when the mm, when the course is uh, released in probably in mid October. So that's everything for, everything for me uh, for this talk. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we have four minutes for Q and A. A five minutes for Q and A. So anyone has a question that we would like to discussion with a speaker. Okay, maybe they are very shy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, after the talk, I will be here for like 30 next minutes. So if somebody of you wants to talk to me, just catch me outside. 好,那這邊如果大家沒有問題,那我們這場議程就到這邊。那如果大家有問題,就歡迎再到直接到前面找講者討論。好,那謝謝大家參與這場議程,那我們就到這邊,謝謝大家。